Good morning. Today we'll be doing an experiment involving this apparatus where we're going to push down the piston and record the volume and record the pressure. So our primary objective will be to review the ideal gas law. Secondary objective is to review Boyle's law. And finally, we'll be reviewing the experiment. As mentioned previously, we'll be adjusting the volume by pushing down on the piston. And we'll be measuring pressure. Ultimately, our goal will be to calculate the number of moles of gas that are in the cylinder. So this is defined as our cylinder. The cylinder is filled with air. It's also sealed on both ends. This means that air cannot enter or escape the cylinder. This also means that the quantity of air will be constant throughout the experiment. Here we have our piston. The piston is able to move up or down. Today's experiment will involve me pushing the piston downwards. By pushing the piston downwards, we'll be decreasing the volume of the cylinder. Here is the ideal gas law. PV equals NRT. P stands for pressure. V is the volume. R is called the gas constant. T is the temperature. And finally, N represents the number of moles of the ideal gas. Now for today's experiment, the number of moles will remain constant. That's because the cylinder is sealed on both ends. We're going to try to make sure that the temperature also remains constant. And so that side of the equation, the right side of the equation, will ultimately be constant. And that's represented with this equation here. Well, when one side of the equation is constant, when nRT remains constant, this is a law that Boyle discovered. In practice, we write the following, P1V1 equals P2V2. The 1 stands for initial state, and the 2 stands for final state. And so, for example, we can say that this is our initial state. Notice I've circled the volume there, it's 45 mils, and I've circled the pressure, 107.4 kilopascals. So when we multiply these two quantities, pressure times volume, we end up with that value there, 4,833 kilopascals milliliters. Our final state could be after we push the piston downwards. Notice the volume has now decreased to 40 mils, but that has resulted in an increasing pressure, 118.1 kilopascals. Once again, multiplying these two numbers, we end up with 4,724 kilopascal milliliters. So you may be asking yourself, why the difference? Well, one of the problems, and it's a minor problem, is that the volume measurement is not quite accurate. There is a tube, which you cannot see in this picture, off to the side that's connected to the cylinder. This tube has a pressure gauge. As a result of the length of this tube, it adds about 7 to 8 milliliters. And so, instead of being 45 milliliters, our initial state is probably closer to 52 milliliters. And for our final state, instead of being 40 milliliters, it's probably closer to 47 milliliters. Once again, this is because there is a tube that's connected to the cylinder. You can't see this in the picture, but it is there. And it's fairly long, and it holds air. So now if we redo our calculation of pressure times volume, you'll see that the values are closer in agreement with each other for each state. All right, so here's our experiment. And what you're going to do is record this table. Now as you watch this experiment, we're going to see that I'm going to push down on the piston 
and you'll notice that the temperature is going to go up slightly. We're going to wait for that temperature to go back to very close value of 27.0 degrees Celsius and then we'll record our data point. So right around there it's 27.1 degrees Celsius. Please record that pressure for 45 milliliters. Hopefully we've recorded that pressure and now we've pushed down and now we've hit around 40 milliliters. Once again, we're going to wait for the temperature to go back to around 27.0 or 27.1. And then we're going to record that pressure. Now we're going to go down to 35 milliliters. That's very important to wait. It's very important for that temperature to get back to 27 degrees Celsius. Once it hits close to that, we'll record that pressure. Now at this point, I must say that you can really feel the pressure as you push down on the piston. It requires a significant amount of force in order to push down on that piston. Now record the 30 milliliter data point, 151.2 or three kilopascals. And now the final data point of 25 milliliters. Wait for that temperature to go down. All right. So I'm going to ask you to create the following pressure volume graph. And in addition, I'd like you to create a second graph. Pressure on the y-axis, 1 over volume on the x-axis. So why the second graph? Well, going back to our ideal gas law and rearranging it to isolate for pressure. And now I just want to write like this because it's going to be easier to see something in a moment. Writing the equation like this, Ultimately, your data is going to produce a linear equation. Why is that? Well, remember, a linear equation is given by the formula y equals mx. In this case, pressure is our y variable. 1 over volume is our x variable. And nRT, number of moles times the gas constant times the temperature, is our slope. Now, using this idea that the slope of the equation is nRT and knowing the temperature throughout the experiment was around 27 degrees Celsius, you can solve for the number of moles. So that's the ultimate goal of this experiment, to determine the number of moles that were initially in the cylinder. Hope you've enjoyed today's activity. Have a great day. Bye-bye.